Hello and welcome back. So let's see how we receive information on the PHP end once it's sent here. So what I'm going to do is go to profile. We're still on profile.view. And what we would do is let's go to, uh, where is this? Here, when the upload is complete, uh, what I want is to do to get the text that was returned. So I don't want to refresh the page anymore. What I want to do is let me even remove this upload complete. I want to do a console.log. So console.log. And the returned text is found in the Ajax response text variable. All right. So if now, right now, the way things are, I'll refresh and try to see what I will receive in the console. You notice that I'll receive the entire page, this same page, because we are accessing this same page when sending an Ajax request. So if I save like this, you'll see that it's the HTML document that I actually get. Okay, this same document here. So what we need to do is stop this HTML document from showing up. If you look closely, you see that even the code that we are using here in JavaScript is down here. As you can see it here, this is the one. Oh, I've clicked something. You, I think you, if you look closely here, you will notice that it's the same page. You see image added equals false. There's all the JavaScript here. So it's just refreshing itself and bringing back whatever information is echoed on that page, because this is how Ajax works. If you uh, access a page using Ajax, anything that is echoed in that page or any HTML in short, any data that's returned will be returned back. So in short, if you open that page in a browser, the same page that you're accessing uh, using Ajax, if you opened it in a browser, whatever you see in that browser will be the result. So in this case, as you can see here, this is the result. But I want us to change so that when we do a post, we don't get any result. We get an empty page. So what I want to do is right about here where it, say, uh, it shows that you've posted something. Let me do this. Let me remove this false. Let's just tell it to die here so it doesn't continue. So what will happen is this. If I now post, I make a post here like save. Uh, let me remove the event um, for a second here so that it doesn't use JavaScript anymore. I just want it to post. So save changes. Where are we? Yes, I'll remove this on click list now for a moment. Refresh. So I just want a normal post. So it's going to post. Oops. Oh, because I changed the type to to button, I guess. That's why it's not posting. So refresh again. Now, if I post, I expect to see an empty page. So if I save, there you see an empty page because here, uh, that's what I told it to die. Once we go through the post process, we die. Now, if I echo something here and say, hello over here, okay? And I refresh the page. That's what I'll see when I post something. So in the same way, if I post something using Ajax, it's as good as refreshing the page with a post. And then whatever I see now is what I'll see as a result in the Ajax. So if, for example, I wanted to send some useful information uh, as JSON, maybe JSON is better because it's like sending arrays uh, using text. So if I added something like this and say uh, data, is equal to and then put hello there like this so i can return some useful data with this as you can see there so to show you what's happening now is this let me refresh the page without posting anything i just want a normal refresh and this is what happens but when i click save that's what i get so what i'll do now is i'll go back here to preview and undo these guys so that when i click it actually sends an ajax request instead of refreshing the page so right click inspect let's go to the console to see the result now if i click save 
you see exactly that result I saw when I opened it in the browser and that's data hello. So this is how we can get information from there. So we're going to save it in form of JSON so that when we bring that data back as a string, we can convert it back to an array, which is more useful than just string. So JSON is what we're going to use here. And JSON is a way to send data as a string so that it's easy to convert to an array when it gets to its destination. This is all JSON is. It's just a way of transporting arrays from one system to another in form of a string. So what we would do is, it means now when we post and send something through Ajax, it's passing through here. So if there's a file of any kind, it will be uploaded normally. Uh, if all this process will take place, all of this up to here. Now, instead of redirecting the page, this would have zero effect on anything. So what we'll do is we'll mute these guys because really we won't do anything. So with this already, whether I put die here or not, uh, if I save now, it's going to actually save what I'm doing. Everything is already set up. So watch here. If I remove this two with Mary and then I hit save. So it has saved, right? But it won't refresh or anything. Now, if I refresh the page, you see that it has actually saved the information. So if I write gen, gen, um, gen do here, I change it to that and save. It will save but it won't refresh the page. And if I do refresh the page, you see that it has actually saved Gendo. Let's try and change the image as well. So I'll put my man, Will Smith here. Wait, 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 where did I go? Where did I go? Will Smith. And then if I try to save, nothing has changed. But if I refresh my page, you see that it has now changed. So it's actually working already. The only problem is the information we are receiving in the console is not useful. If I inspect here the console and save, you see that I'm receiving the whole page, but I want to stop this. And we've already seen how to stop this is to put die after the execution here. So I want after this post thing happens, let me find the corresponding thing here, which is this one. I will put die so that the script does not continue uh when this happens okay no continuation and then i will get a clean slate this time so i'll refresh the page click save and as you can see i got an empty string very cool so which means now i can put my own information here so what i want to do is like i said whatever is echoed on this page will be sent back as a message now i can't echo uh an array okay because that would just, uh, it won't be useful. I can echo it, but the information I get won't be useful. It's better I save it as JSON. So what I would do is when we reach here, we get profile su saved successfully, right? So instead of this, what I'll do is I'll create an array and say array uh, and call this one message is equal to, and then put that message there like so. Profile saved successfully. Now, if there are errors, right? then we know that it wasn't saved properly. So, uh, wait, data errors. Okay, so this error thingy is done here. Uh, user errors. So instead, what we're going to do is, let me copy this. Let's do it here as well. Uh, this is where the errors reside. Okay, so this is an array of errors. So I'm going to copy this. And then right here, I will put another message. So in fact, let's do this and say, if empty, okay? If this, there are no errors there, then good, everything was saved properly. Otherwise we have an else statement where uh, something else happened, right? So the message was, uh, please correct these errors or something, I don't know. Then we can have another one called errors here. So errors, uh, which will contain the errors of this thingy here. Okay. 
So at least I know that array will contain something by the time we get here. So I'll copy this and at this bottom here, I'm going to echo out. Uh, now I can't echo it out. I can print readable and paste array like that. So it means whatever is contained in the array will be printed here, which means that's the result I'll see on the other side. So let's try intentionally to get some errors. I'm going to put numbers in there and there something like this. Then I'm going to say save, but I get an empty string. That is not the good. Let's see here, what is going on? Um, okay, so validation happens here. Okay, edit validation. And then things are saved here. Okay, so the reason things are not working is because we are doing this when things are saved already. So this was the wrong place to do things because this only passes when there are no errors. So if we want to see errors, we definitely have to do them after this. So let's put them here just before the die part right there. Okay, let's move them away. Good. All right, so let's try that again. Mm -hmm. Clickety click. And this is what we get. You see, we get a message. Please correct these errors. Errors, and these are the errors here. But this is text, and it's not very useful. It's because it contains all this text, array, bracket. Now, if I'm, I'm to separate this information, if I want to just get this, it's going to be difficult because I have to start parsing this information. So instead, what I'll do is, instead of print readable, I'm going to echo it, but I'll echo the JSON version of this. So I'll use a function called JSON encode to encode this data into JSON. So what JSON encode does is it gets an array or an object and converts it to a string. That way, when it, wherever it's going can be converted back to an array and become more useful. So instead of looking at things like this, we're going to get this result instead. So let me try and save again. And this is what I get instead. So you see, this is different to this. This is more useful because I can convert this back to an array using JavaScript. So what I can do is when, I, when we come back here to the result, instead of just uh, echoing out the result, where is it? Console.log, yes. We'll use JSON. That's how you do it in JavaScript, dot parse, like that. So we're just telling it that the returned result is expected to be JSON. So try to parse it as JSON, which means it's going to convert it to an array or an object, and that's more useful. So from this, we're improving. Let's click Save again. And this time, this is what we get. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, JSON dot parse. Oh. Yeah, the problem is I have to refresh the page because JavaScript is on this page. So that's unfortunate part. I wanted to compare those. So if I save now, this is what I get. It's an object. Look at that. Even better because now I have a message and there's an object called message. So if I want to get the message, I just say object.message. But let's add some errors, shall we? Let's add uh, numbers here, numbers there, so that we have some errors. And then hit save. And then now we have, please correct the following errors. And then we have an errors object here, which if we click inside, we can view all that stuff. Very cool stuff here. So let's see how we can utilize this information. Once we pass this information, what I want to check for is if there's an errors object in here. If it's there, then I know there are errors and things didn't go well. So instead of having to do it here, what I'll do is I'll create a function that will handle this result. So I'm just going to say uh, handle result. And instead of getting the parsed version, I will send just the text that was returned. So let's create that function. Say function handle result okay and then this is the result text that was returned and we can convert it to an object and say var obj is equal to uh, json.parse the result like so 
Alrighty then. So now at this point, we have a valid object. And then we just need to check if there were errors or not. And uh, uh, if type of, right, uh, obj is equal to object, then we got something good. Then um, object was created. Because the reason why I'm uh, putting this if statement is that sometimes the returned information is not valid JSON. If there were errors in the PHP, it won't be valid JSON. So which means this process will fail here. So we have to make sure that the uh, converting this text to an object has actually worked before we start trying to probe what's inside the object. Okay. So if we get to this point, then we can say if type of Again, object dot errors. I just want to know if that exists is equal to object as well. Then we have errors. Here it says we have errors. Otherwise, everything went well. Save complete here. Okay. So here I can say alert. Uh, data saved successfully exclamation point um, here we'll have errors instead so I just want to display the errors like this as an object I don't know if that's even possible so let's give it a quick test here and see what happens so if I now save data saved successfully nice but let's put some numbers here and click Save and then it returns an object instead, it didn't say saved. So which means it knows there are errors. So what we need now is a way to inform the user that saving failed errors, please correct the errors on the page. And then we highlight the error here and show it. Okay.